to the name of our Lord. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for those who are here with us in person. I'm excited because uh, tonight, this evening at Jarvis, um, we sang this for those who are online. Uh, literally, we have three different Bible studies going on simultaneously at Jarvis right now. We're, we're here in person as well as in this virtual space. And then on top of that, we have a, a Bible study going on for persons who are beginners, who are very, big, very, very young in the Bible and trying to, and don't really know much about it. And so we're grateful for those persons as well as, as well as we, um, as well as we have a Bible study going on this evening at Jarvis for those persons who are primarily Spanish speakers. So man, I'm excited about this. I want us to get ready this evening to dive directly into our lesson for tonight. And so uh, if you will, I want us to, to first begin with prayer. And let me say welcome to everybody. I see you logging on online. Again, thank you for those who are here in person with us in all three rooms. Let's get ready to pray. I want us to pray tonight before we before we begin our Bible study. I want us to pray uh, specifically. There are a lot of persons getting sick right now with flus, colds, viruses, COVID, et cetera. And so we want to just pray for people. And likewise, I have uh, personally experienced um, um, a couple of deaths, as well as there are a couple of persons in my family that are literally right now uh, on the verge of death. And so uh, we want to be praying for families and we want to be playing, praying for people, as well as praying for uh, th this world in which we live. Let's pray. Then we're going to get into the word of God. Thank you so much, God, for uh, this wonderful evening, how we love you. We praise you. We honor you. And we pray this evening, oh God, for your people, for our brothers and our sisters. Life is doing those things that life do. And as life is doing it, God, here's what we know. We are in a situation where we cannot make it if we do not have help. And so we come before you asking you that you will be the help we need. Now, God, whether that manifestation of help comes through some miracle, we know you do that. There are times when you show up and things just work out and nobody can explain it. That's a miracle. But it is equally miraculous when those of us who have hands extend our hands and help other people take our feet and walk into places uh, that sometimes don't make sense to make sure that somebody else's life is made better. We don't know in which way, which way or what way you're going to perform the miracle, but God, we need your miracle. We pray, oh God, for those persons who are battling illnesses, who are dealing with sicknesses of whatever kind. We're asking you, oh God, that you will raise them up. I pray, oh God, for those families that I can name so many of them right now. Um, particularly, I will name Ulysses Hawkins' family, who a graduate of Jarvis who just died recently. We pray, oh God, that you will strengthen that family. Uh, you, you promised us this in the scriptures, that you would be peace for us that passes all understanding. So our prayer tonight is that you will do what you have said you will do. And we will give you glory as we attempt to do all the time in Jesus name. Now, God, as we get ready to go into your word, would you bless now our time together in Jesus name? Amen. Again, let me welcome everybody. Thank y'all so much for joining us online. I see all of you and I'm so grateful for your presence with us online. And I want to go, go, go ahead and say this. Thank you so much to uh, Miss Marlene uh, Rivas and Miss Kathy or NATO, I'm finna mess her name up, but on NATO, I think that's her name, for leading the Spanish speaking class, as well as Dr. Russell, who's downstairs right now with the um, be by beginners in the Bible. Let's get into the word of God tonight. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 is where we want to go tonight. Hebrews chapter 11. I will pull it up online for those who are online and we'll read this together. Hebrews chapter 11. I want to get right into the word of God tonight. I will just say this as we pass along. Um, and when I don't ask about, as people are giving, I always get text messages asking, uh, Pastor, how do we give? If you want to give offering, then you are welcome to do that. Um, you just simply go to our cash app, dollar sign, Jarvis Church, and you can do that if you would like to. Hebrews chapter 11, verse one. This is what it says. Faith is the assurance of things you have hoped for, the absolute conviction that there are realities you've never seen. It was by faith that our forebearers were approved. Through faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. Everything we now see 
was fashioned from that which is invisible. Then it begins by faith, Abel. Go down to verse five, by faith, Enoch. Go down to verse seven, by faith, Noah. Go to verse eight, by faith, Abraham. Keep on going down and you see by faith, Abraham's wife, Sarah, verse 11. And then it goes down and it says, all these that mentioned died in faith without having received the promises, although they saw the fulfillment as though from a distance. Here's what we want to do tonight for the next few minutes. I, we want to just kind of talk through how do we learn to live by faith by watching other people, by learning from the life of other people. And that's all we want to do tonight. This is nothing real deep, uh, but I want us to I want us to examine this. How do we live, learn to walk by faith? Let me let me say this. Let me say this. Um, before we get heavily into the notes that I prepared, uh, and I will attempt to make sure that we post this online, the, the notes for later so that we can in fact see them. But let me just say this. It is important in as, in as much as we learn how to walk by watching people walk. We learn how to talk by listening to people talk. We learn how to, to be honest with you, those are the, now of course I got a master musician in here who, who plays anything by rote that you want. But, but many musicians learn to play just by watching the hands of other, other musicians. Here's the reality. We learn faith the same way. Now, let me illustrate this one other way before I get into this for those online and the person who's here. Here's, here's the reality. My grandson is getting on my nerves with this lady, and I'm trying to remember now what is her name. But she's this little lady. Oh, man, if I go to YouTube and pull her up, I can see her. I can see her face, and I, can, I don't know why I can't remember her name now. Because when I tell you my grandson is in love, and if you got grandchildren or children, you know this lady, too. Um, if I let me see if I can see see if I can find her name right now. I can't find her name, but she's on all the time, and she she does these wonderful lessons on how to say your ABCs, and she teaches babies and kids how to begin to talk. They are my grandson is learning what to do and how to do simply by watching this lady. I don't know if her name is Laura, what, but she but she's what she's watching this lady, and therefore he's learning. What we want to do tonight is real simple. We want to look at the lives of some of the people that's in the book of Hebrews. We want to simply just say, okay, what do we learn from them that teaches us how to walk by faith? So let's begin tonight by first es establishing what this Bible says is a definition for faith. Look at it. It's in verse one. It's in verse one. It simply says this. Faith is the assurance of things you have hoped for, the absolute conviction there are realities you've never seen. So faith, here's what he literally just says, that when we have faith, even if we don't, even if what we see is not in our hands, it is real in our heart. That's all he really is saying. So, so, so somebody asked, somebody asked Mike Jordan years ago and LeBron James, likewise, Kobe Bryant said, uh, did you ever think you would be a champion? And they said, but all three of them said the same thing, ironically. They said, yeah, I've always already been able to see it. Because here's the reality. Here's what this is trying to teach us before we do anything else. That faith sees it even when I don't have it. So, so if you are a musician and, and you're a concert musician, uh, as I have one here tonight, here's the reality. If you can't see yourself um, playing on the master stage, you'll never get there. Never get there. What faith is literally saying is, I see it, I see it, even though I can't touch it. That's what it is. Faith is the absolute conviction. And by the way, it's, it's this. Man, you can't talk me out of this. It's real simple. It's real simple. I told y'all that's online. We're not, we're not trying to be deep tonight. I just want to, I just want to really hopefully help us to learn something about how to walk by faith. Lee, Lee Marine, it is knowing that it is that it is. Now watch watch what it does. It, this teaches us tonight something about why we got to have faith. Now verse 6 says without faith it is impossible to please God. Uh, look, we cannot claim to be people of God unless we have faith. Why? Because we got to have faith because remember faith is the absolute convic absolute conviction that there are realities we've never seen because ain't none of us never seen God. It's really that simple, y'all. Jarvis, it's simple. We've never seen God, and yet we believe God is. 
Now I get in, I get in, well, no, I've never gotten, that's not true. I've never gotten in an argument with atheists. I've seen friends of mine get in arguments with atheists. I don't argue with atheism that there's no God. I don't. I, I, I understand that they're basing their reality on reality. Fancy Sergeant, it's good to see you. That they're basing their reality on those of you who like, hear me calling names. I'm looking at people popping up online. So, so they're basing their reality on reality. And that's a faith too, because they don't, they don't know, so they have faith in knowledge. I have faith that there is God, that there is, there is this power, there is this force, there is this, oh man, some folk want to call it the universe, whatever. I, I'm not arguing with people over names. What I am saying, God is real. And so what this says is you cannot please God unless you believe God is real. That's where it starts. It, 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 you can't progress any further until we start there. So here's what he does. He gives us two reasons. I want you to write these down if, you write, if you're taking notes. He said there are two reasons why you, we got to have faith. First thing is in verse two. And then we're going to look at the lives of these people. Verse two, um, uh, Charlene, he says this. He says, we need faith for approval. Watch what it says, verse two. It was by faith that the forebearers were approved. So when God looked at, if you go back to, if you go back, for example, to Genesis six, and I won't take time tonight to turn over there because I want to get through because I really want to get down there and stick my head in some of these other rooms. But Genesis chapter six, here's what the Bible says, that the Bible says, and, and Noah found favor in God's sight. What caused Noah to have God's approval? It was because God looked at him and said, this man has an absolute conviction that there are realities he's never seen. Hopefully we see how this is. Number two, he says, you, you need faith for creativity. Look at it. Even God needed faith to create. Look at it. Verse three, it says, through faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. Everything we now see was fashioned from that which is invisible. In other words, here's a principle that he's trying to teach us. And it's important for us to learn this if we're going to grow in faith. This principle is simply this. Everything that is exists in two places. First, it exists in the spirit realm. Then it exists in the physical realm. Now, I, I'll illustrate this like this. Tiger Woods is maybe my favorite golfer of all time. Now, there are people who might say that Jack Nichols is the greatest of all time. I'm not here to argue that. Here's what I do know. Um, Natalie, literally, it is that Tiger Woods, daddy taught him how to make a putt. This is how he made, he told him to make a putt. He said, line up, Line the cut up, read the green. Once you read the green, he said, then what I want you to do is I want you to see the line for the shot and then get up over it, relax your hands, he said, steady your hands. He said, close your eyes and, 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 and then make the putt. He said, because the ball is going to move in the direction that you can see it moving. This is really, man, wow. This is really important. He's, he is saying that faith causes us to see something, then move to create it. Now, I hope you hear me, Jarvis. This is important. Faith causes us to see something and then move to create it. I'll illustrate it one more way. I'll, I'll illustrate it one more way. Have you ever watched Steph Curry shooting a basketball? I'm talking about like at the All-Star game last year when he was on it. And Steph Curry comes down the court and he gets just past half court. And Giannis Antetokounmpo is standing there and Steph Curry gets the ball and he launches the shot, man. And he doesn't even wait to see what it's going to do. He turns around and starts skipping back down the court and the ball goes through the net. Because what? He has the faith. Because he has already seen it going through the basket. So therefore, he doesn't have to wait to see it go through the basket because he already knows that it is. That's the same way that God created the world. God, this Bible is saying, God literally saw what God saw, but knew that it would be, spoke it into existence, and he did it, and it came to pass. So having said all of that, here's what I want to do. If you have not already shared this online, I want you to make sure you share this because the next few minutes is going to be phenomenal in regard to the lessons that we learned from this, from this text. Here's what I want to do now. I want us to look at the, the lives of some of these people. And we're not going to read all of the texts about their stories, but I want us to learn how to walk by faith. What does it require for us to be people of faith? Let's look at it. Let's begin with Abel. It's in verse four. It says, by faith, Abel, Abel presented to God a sacrifice more acceptable than his brother Cain and, and learned that he was righteous 
as God testified by proving his offering, approving his offering, Reverend. And by faith, he speaks, although his voice was silenced by death. Here's what Abel teaches us. And I want you to hear me. The question is, how did Abel's sacrifice be received? For those who have not read it, it's in Genesis chapter four, verses one through 16. Here's what happened. Two boys, Cain, Abel. Cain and Abel literally give a sacrifice or offering to God. God accepts Cain's sacrifice. He uh, rejects Cain's sacrifice, rather, and accepts Abel's sacrifice. Why does this happen? It's one thing. Write this down if you're taking notes. Because faith requires sincerity. This is the first thing. Listen, faith requires sincerity. That's the lesson we learned from Abel's life. That he, here's what happened. Cain had, uh, the Bible says, um, these crop. And what he does is he does not give God the best that he has from his cattle, rather, from his from his livestock. Abel has these 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 vest vegetation, these these uh, uh this crop that he has. And literally what Abel does is he says, hey, man, I want to give God. Hey, Pastor Chris, Owen, I want to give God the best that I have out of sincere heart. Cain in other takes what is second best and he gives it to God. Listen to me. If we want to be people of faith, it's going to begin with our sincerity. Now, what this teaches us, what this teaches us is you don't have to have what others have. You don't you don't have to be able to do what others do, but you do have to have a pure heart. Let me give you Bible and then we'll move on to the next lesson, because, again, I'm just walking through these lessons tonight. Watch what the Bible says in the book of Psalm uh, 51. God said a broken and a contrite spirit I'll never cast out. This is of interest for me because what this says is when God sees somebody who is sincere, when you have that sincerity, God says, man, I want to, I want to, I'm, go I'm going to embrace you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to bless you. This is the story of Abel. It teaches us that if we're going to be people of faith, it has to be sincere. You can't fake it till you make it. Man, you got to do it sincerely. And by the way, and I'll move on, do it at the level where you are. Man, listen, there are people who talk to me about tithing. Let me tell you why I don't beat people up about tithing. I don't beat people up about tithing because if you don't have a sincere faith to trust God with 10%, but you can trust God with, with 1%, give God the 1%. Give God the 1%. Now, I may be the only pastor in America in the world that's going to tell you that, but give God the 1%. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, if you give God the 1% and it's out of a sincere heart, Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians, he says, God loves a cheerful giver. And if you're giving uh, out of, 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 of obligation, then it, it's rejected. Okay. So first thing is, it requires sincerity. Let's look now. Watch what it says in, in verse 5 through 6. It says, by faith, Enoch. Here's, here's, here's the story. Genesis chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. Here's the story in short. Enoch, the Bible says, doesn't give us a whole lot. It just says he walked with God and then he was not, meaning he walked with God and he kept on walking with God and then he was translated up into heaven. He didn't see death. He's one of two men in scripture that the Bible says never died. Here's what happened. Here's what happened, Pastor Owen. He walks with God and then he's gone. So what's the, what's the lesson that this teaches us? Here's the lesson of faith because faith requires intimate and intimate walk with God. It's important. Listen, I, I'm, I'm, I wrote a, a, a lesson for the campus this morning um, that I hope people will read if they have not read. It. And that is, how's your prayer life? Here's the reason for why prayer is important. Listen to me, y'all. If, you, if you're out there and you're listening, hear me. The reason prayer is important is not because we want to prove to people how spiritual we are, we want to draw closer to God. I'm going to tell you this. Here's what the Bible says. James, James says this. He said, if you draw close to God, God will draw close to you. Now, let me, let me, let me illustrate it in a very practical manner. Very practical manner tonight. Here it is, Vanti. Imagine that you are dating. You have, your, you have a, I don't remember now, Vanti, if you're, if you're married or not. But here's what I will tell you. If you're not married, and, and I don't remember, I think you are. But, but here's the reality. If you're not married and you are you dating somebody, and you 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 deciding whether or not you want to marry them. Here's what happens: you're not going to trust them with all your secrets and with your whole heart if they won't spend no time with you. You're just not. You're not. Here's the same thing with God. If we really want to understand God, and we really want to 
We want to have the people talk about the power of God, the, the expression of God, the gifts of God, whatever it is. Here's how you get it. Draw close to God. So which is going to mean, by the way, we got to have some dedicated time that we're going to spend with God. I hope people are hearing me. This is extremely simple tonight, but I, but I really believe it's extremely important. We, we have got to make sure we're spending time with God. Here's the first lesson from Abel. That is, we got to have sincerity. The second lesson that we are learning tonight is that we got to have an intimate walk with God. Let's go to verse seven now. Watch what the Bible says. By faith, Noah. What does Noah do? It's found in Genesis chapter six, verse 11, all the way to Genesis chapter nine, verse 19. Here's the short version of the story. Somebody went out. Here's the short version of the story. Bible says God comes down and says, I'm going to cause it to rain. Now, here's the interesting thing, according to biblical history, never had rained. Now, he didn't know what that was, really. And it certainly had never had flooded like God was saying. So God told him to do something nobody had ever heard of, build an ark. And then God gives him all the instructions on how to do it. And watch what happens. Watch what happens. The Bible says he goes and he builds the ark. There's a wonderful movie uh, called Evan Almighty that, <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is built around this particular story. Here's what happens. He goes, Natalie, and he builds this ark, and then the rain comes. And for 40 days and for 40 nights, it rains. And there's some, some really tragedy in the story because people on the earth were drowned, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Here's what I want you to understand. There is a lesson of faith in this. Watch. God tells Noah to do something that he can't even prove is going to be. What does faith require? Listen, faith means I got to believe in things sometimes that I can't prove. Now, I hope y'all are hearing me because to me, this is powerful. Let me, let me illustrate it like this. There was a, there was a theologian, um, German theologian named Paul Tillich. Paul Tillich is said to have said that um, he said one time, I cannot prove that there's a heaven. Neither can I prove, neither have I ever seen New Jerusalem or the cross or Calvary. I have not seen heaven. I have not any of this. He said, but I believe it so much that I'll stake my life on it. Now, this is, this is for me, for me, this is phenomenal because here's, here's what faith requires. Faith requires, man, I got to believe it. Look, man, I don't argue with people. I, I, I don't argue with people. There's some things that I just know that I know that I know that I know that I know, and I can't prove it because I say this and then I move on. Listen, this is real. I'm going to say it again. This is real simple, but I promise you this is good for us tonight. Dr. John Mangrum said this at Jarvis Christian College a long time ago when I was a, a student matriculating. He said, remember, this is faith and not science. Why is that important? Because science says two plus two is four. Science says four plus four is eight. Science says you can take two fish and five barley loaves and you can feed, maybe if you break it up real small, maybe you can feed 10, 15 people in my house. You couldn't feed that many, I promise you, but not the way them people eat. But watch, faith says that even though I can't prove that this is enough to feed 5,000, I know it to be true. And so when in the gospel, when Jesus takes two fish and five loaves of bread, he feeds 5,000. Watch this, not counting women and children. Watch what the Bible says. And every time, Pastor Johnson, he breaks bread, bread breaks off of bread. And every time he breaks fish, fish breaks off of fish. Why is this? Because Pastor Johnson, faith, according to Noah, proves to us, it says, listen, I believe some stuff I can't prove. I can't prove that there's a heaven. I just believe it. I can't, I can't prove that there are going to be miracles. I just believe it. And by the way, faith ultimately makes it so. Because even though the people outside the ark didn't believe it, they didn't stop it from raining. Okay? I hope y'all hear me. Let me move on. So, so we now have some lessons that we've learned. From Abel, we learned that faith requires sincerity. From Enoch, we learned that faith requires an intimate walk with God. From Noah, we learned that faith requires believing in things sometimes that you can't prove. Let me, let me hit, hit, hit just, can I hit just two more 
just two more because we, we're almost at the end of our time of, of, of a lot of time. So let's go because the Bible then gets to verse eight. If you can still got your Bible, verse eight in chapter 11, watch what it says. By faith, Abraham. Now, this is a long story. This is a long story, and I certainly am not finna read all of it, but it begins in Genesis chapter 11. It goes at least through Genesis chapter 25. Here is Abraham's story. God comes to Abram in chapter 11, tells Abram, says, I want you to get up, and I want you to go to a land that I will show you. I'm going to make you into a, a great nation. Take, takes Abram outside and tells him, look up at the stars. He says, and then looks down at the sand. He said, if you count the stars and you can count the sand, then you'll know the number of descendants that I'm going to give you. For 25 years, for 25 years, Abram literally lives with a promise from God with no manifestation. Uh, evangelist Kayla George Sunt came to Jarvis on this past Tuesday and preached about this in such a marvelous way. And if you are out there, by the way, and you are a pastor and you're looking for a, a wonderful preacher uh, that you should bring to your church, I want to encourage you uh, to reach out to evangelist Kayla George Sunt. She will bless your congregation. Watch the lesson. Watch the lessons that this teaches, because this story is so powerful that it teaches us some lessons. I want to give us four real quick. I want to give us four real quick. Here's the first thing that Abraham's story teaches us. It tells us that faith requires moving in obedience to God. Verse eight, that he heard the voice of God telling him to go and that one day he would receive an inheritance. And he went. Now, listen, hey, listen, your logic and my logic will get in the way of us obeying God. Because sometimes we, in the attempt to, to dot every I and cross every T and to make sure it makes sense, we start questioning and saying, well, maybe that's not. No, sometimes God just says, go. And faith says, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going. Just because I heard God's voice telling me to go. Now, I'm not, there's a difference between God's voice and psychosis, and we need to know the difference. But what I'm telling us is we got to move in obedience. Second thing that this teaches us, Along with that, we move in obedience, looking, looking forward with expectation. Listen, y'all, faith says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I, okay, let me illustrate it. Let me try to illustrate it. Um, I have a friend of mine uh, by the name of Eric Willis. He's in Dallas, Texas. He, he and his wife, Keitha. And I never forget this. He told me the story, and this is true. And by the way, when we were at Jarvis, he was one of the most phenomenal saxophonists that you will ever see. And as far as I know, he still is. And so this is the way he started playing. He was trying to play, and, you know, he wasn't very good, he said. He said he went to a, a, a church meeting one night, and when he went to that church meeting, said the evangelist that was there, uh, told him, said, God is going to cause you to play and play around the world and play with, with great people. And he was one of the people missing notes and all this kind of stuff. He said, he said, and when he walked, when the guy walked over there to him with the microphone, so he stuck the microphone into the, into the open of the mouth of the saxophone. And he said, play, cause the anointing is coming upon you to play. Would you believe that Eric began to blow the saxophone? Now, listen, just because God said it, he started to do it and turned into a phenomenal saxophonist from that moment. Because faith requires that we move in obedience, looking forward with expectation. Here's, here's the third thing. Faith requires that we try again, even when it seems hopeless. Now, where am I getting this from? Watch this. It's right here in this text. The Bible says, verse 11, by faith, Abraham's wife, Sarah, became fertile long after uh, menopause because she believed God would be faithful to God's promise. So from this man who was almost at death's door, God brought forth descendants. Now, let me tell you why this is important to us. I, I don't know if I'm coming through as well as I hope I am, but let me tell you, Pastor Johnson, why this is important. Because real faith does not give up on God. And Abraham is in what seemed like a hopeless situation. Why? Because this text says, Sarah has reached menopause. The women out there will know that that simply means she can't produce no more. She's, she's incapable of becoming pregnant. Abraham, the Bible says in Romans 4, his body is all but dead, which means, ladies and gentlemen, he's experiencing impotence. He's having ED, as it were. So here's what happens. Here's what happens. Now, there is zero reason why they should go in to have any form of an intimate night. But God has promised. 
I hope y'all are hearing me. God has promised. And now, so at some point, watch, they don't just believe God to do it. They decide to do those things that are naturally necessary for them to produce a baby. And Charlene, the Bible says they conceived because they were willing to try again, even when it seemed like it was hopeless, which implies something that I want to insert in here. And then I'm going to touch one final thing and we're going to be through tonight. Here's what I'm trying to tell us. You got to have some patience. If you're going to have faith, man, you got to have some patience. Because it one of the challenges of this age, Pastor Johnson, is we have convinced ourselves that God is going to always do it right now. That's why we tell lies. Unfortunately, I'm going to get in trouble for this. But we tell lies sometime and tell people that if you run around the church three times, God going to fix it. And if you if you if you jump, if you shout, no, sometimes you shout and don't nothing happen. Sometimes sometimes you shout and absolutely nothing happens. Sometimes you you believe. And it gets worse. But you try again because you trust God. Let me let me let me let me close these lessons tonight. I want to go down to one more thing, okay? Because I've said a whole bunch of things tonight that I believe are helpful. But can we go down? Can we go down, please, to one final thing tonight? And then I'll close. Because this text goes on to talk about Moses and it talks all, about all these people. But I want to go down to talk about one more person. It is in verse 31. Verse 31. Because I want to leave, I want to leave us with one final lesson tonight. Just one more. Verse 31. Listen to what it says. Beginning in verse 30, actually. By faith, the walls of Jericho toppled after the people that circled them for seven days. Verse 31. By faith, the prostitute Rahab welcomed the Hebrew spies into her home so that she did not perish with the unbelievers. Now, what's the story here? Joshua chapter two and Joshua chapter six. Um, when, the, when Joshua and Caleb are, are in fact uh, running from uh, the, the enemies, uh, they go into the prostitute's house, into the brothel, and she hides them up on the roof so that, uh, in fact, the enemies cannot find them. And then later she takes a scarlet thread and she lowers them out down on the other side of the wall. And then they tell us, hey, we coming back to destroy the city. But when we come back, uh, if she said, let me hang this scarlet, scarlet thread outside my house and promise me that my family and I will not be harmed. And she hang the, 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 the scarlet thread outside the, win the window and the, their family was saved. Now, here's where I'm trying to go with this, because I want us to understand this last principle. For those who want to have faith, listen at me. If you don't hear much else I said tonight, hear me on this one. Faith requires, now, I've talked about all these things that faith requires. So now, I want to tell you something faith does not require. Here it is. Did you read it? Verse 31. By faith, the prostitute Rahab. Did you hear it? By faith, yeah, the prostitute ate Rahab. I want to say it again because I want to make sure that everybody here, Natalie, listen to me. By faith, the prostitute Rahab. The Bible, even when it's talking about her faith, calls her a prostitute. It never said she stopped being a prostitute. It never, oh, I know, I know, I know some of the holiness people about to lose their mind right now. It never says that she cleaned up what she messed up. It just simply says she believed God. And it calls her here the prostitute Rahab. Now, I am not suggesting to us that we continue in sin. I am not saying that we need to continue to do those things that we know that are not right. But what I am saying, listen to me, and here's the lesson, and then we close. Faith does not require perfection. I hope you hear the lesson. Faith does not require perfection. So we, we have this idea in our head that we got to we gotta be a certain way. We got to walk a certain way. We got to, and we hold people sometimes to these standards. That's, that's why people are surprised when preachers mess up because we don't consider them to be men or women of God because they messed up. No, no. Listen, here's the reality. Faith does not require your perfection. Faith requires your perfect belief in God that I'm going and it's not even perfect all the time, but you you and I can, can be imperfect people and we believe God. Because what faith produces is not about who we are or even what's in our life. Faith what what faith produces is all about what's in our heart. Why is that important? Then we do, man. 
because God looks on the, on the heart. God don't look on the outer appearance. And I want somebody that's hearing me tonight, take the pressure off yourself. I'm not, I'm not telling you not to, not to mature and strive to grow and to, to, to be better people and, and, and be more like Jesus. But here's, here's what I'm telling us. Man, even with the flaws in her life, the Bible says she's a person of faith. Now, I don't have time tonight to do it, but I will do one more thing. And this is this is free. This was free. And then we pray. Verse 32 mentions Gideon Barak Samson. Because if I were to tell you that Samson committed suicide, but yet he makes the, the, the hall of faith. How on, man. My friends will say, where they do that at? Because he literally stands in between two pillars, prays and says, God, give me strength to die with my enemies pushes on the pillars, and then his name shows up in the hall of faith? How is he a man of faith? I don't have time to unpack all that. I am simply saying this. You don't have to be perfect to be a person of faith. Y'all, I want us to pray. I want us to pray, and then we're done tonight. I pray, I pray for each and every one of us that we will, in fact, walk by faith and not by sight. I pray tonight that we've learned some lessons from these people that will enable us to move forward. Watch, here are the lessons. Faith requires sincerity. Faith requires an intimate walk with God. Faith requires believing in things that we cannot see. Faith requires moving in obedience to God, looking forward with expectation to try again, even when it seems hopeless. And then faith requires this fearless obedience. And then faith does not require for you to be perfect. Can we pray? Can we pray? And then we'll go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for each person who's heard this lesson tonight. I pray for those of us who will hear it later. May we grow in faith. May we develop in faith. And may you draw us closer to you. That's our prayer tonight. Strengthen our faith as we study your word. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. So God, help us, oh God so that we can be your people in word and in deed, in Jesus' name, amen. Before we go tonight, listen, I wanna encourage you and invite you to come to church with us on Sunday morning. If you can't be here in the sanctuary, then join us online uh, on our social media page, as well as the Zoom that will be posted on, online. Uh, I'm gonna preach Sunday morning. I'm dealing with the disciplines of Jesus and becoming better disciples by following the disciplines of Jesus. I wanna deal with Sunday morning, a discipline of Jesus that's found in Luke chapter four, verse 16. It says, Jesus goes into the, goes into the city and then he goes to the synagogue as was his custom. And I want to talk about why, why basically did Jesus go to church on a regular basis? Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. I can't wait to talk about it on Sunday morning until the time that the Lord lets us get together again. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up the light of God's countenance on you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord grant you God's peace in your labor, your leisure, your laughter, your tears, your joys, as well as in your sorrows. May the love of God go with you every step of your journey. Amen.